Are you looking for a way to create an easy DIY gift that is packed full of meaning and you can create and tailor to the recipient? Or do you just like to journal and are looking for a creative space to keep your thoughts and, and notes? Well, I have been redoing these composition books. I've started with gel press printing, collage, cyanotypes, um, dendritic printing. I've added in some sewing and stitching and even mamagami. So today I want to work with this fractured image. Welcome to my channel. My name is Peg. I call my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. I do a lot of things here. In this space, I enjoy journaling. I enjoy making journals and creating them. I love encaustic wax and dabble in that from time to time. And there's just a lot of things going on over here. A very eclectic mix of mixed media projects. So if you like that, hit that subscribe button. The content bell or the bell will let you know when I upload additional content. I purchased this book at a Goodwill, and it is full of all of these images that are suitable for framing. So I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to use one of these images in a technique I saw over at Devon Rex for Art on her channel. Uh, she utilized it in a collage piece that she was working on. So I'll link her channel in my description below. So please go Take a look at, at her work. It's, she's an amazing artist, and I think you'll enjoy that quite very much. So to start with this piece, I wanted to create a background, and I created that background utilizing book pages, and I wanted to adhere them front, back, inside front cover, inside back cover, and I shall do that, and here we are. Just like that, we have that complete. So the... Front cover is covered in book pages. We have the inside, front, inside, back, and the back cover. And all of that is now dry and ready for us to begin to work with this image. The image I chose was this one with the little butterfly. I just like the color and I want to cut out just the image like you see here. And now I'm taking it to my cutting tool, and I will cut one half inch sections of this image. I am going to lay that down in order, one on top of the other, to not lose the image itself and not have to puzzle piece this thing together when we get ready to adhere it to the book. So I have everything completed, cut, and now I'm just simply laying it out on top of my book page background. And I'm putting it about a little under a quarter of an inch apart. And I'm just piecing that image back together. I shall glue it down with a little bit of glitter glue. And we will get to work on finishing it up. So I've pulled out my graphite pen or my, um, you can use a Stabilo all pencil, a, a graphite pencil. I'm just going to go around the outside edges to frame it in a little bit with that dark um, graphite look. And I'm using the metal ruler just to keep me in a straight line or just keep me right along the edge of that image. Now once I get that laid down, I'm going to go back and just kind of put in any little spots that I don't think I got good coverage. And I'll go back over it once again. And I have taken a paintbrush that was an old one, and I just cut it off into very, very, very short bristles. And I have wet it, and I'm going around the graphite and just kind of smudging that into place so that becomes one, if you will, with the background or with the book pages. So I'm just adding a little bit of water to that, and I'm controlling that with 
this uh, cut off paintbrush. So now that I have that complete on the front, I decided to cut a second image into little one inch squares. That was a little more difficult to keep it all together and, and keep it uh, straight. So I have just laid it out next to my image and I'm putting that into place now with a little bit of glue on the back cover. So once we get that laid down, we'll go back around this with that Stabilo or with that graphite pencil as well. Let's piece this into place and there is the final little piece. And I'm going to leave it kind of unstructured around the outside edge. So it's not the entire image, but I've just focused on on the floral part of this arrangement. So we'll go around that with the graphite and do the same thing with the little paintbrush and smudge everything into place. Okay, with that done, I'm pulling out the hard coat and very carefully going over the image and over the um, graphite to avoid it, you know, it reacts to water or it, it reacts to moisture. So I'm very lightly going over to avoid smudging that. I'm going to allow that to dry and that sets that graphite into place. So now that I have that complete, I will go around the outside edge of my book cover with some archival or stays on black ink to just frame the whole thing in. There, I think that's starting to shape up and look pretty good. So there's your back cover and the front cover. And it just feels a little harsh to me. So I have this gold pen that I'm going to go over the top of the black line with the metallic gold. And that frames it in a little softer, a little nicer. It gives it just a little more definition um, around that outside edge and it doesn't feel so, so harsh and so stark. So we'll hit that all the way around. And then I'm going to dab my pen and get it very moist and splatter across the top of that image. And I shall do the same thing on the back. So there, I think, I think I'm a little happier with that. I did splatter onto my, my cover. Um, I, I am going to cover that spine but I'd like to get the inside kind of together. And I want to put a triangular pocket on there, but I want it to have a little definition. So I'm just um, putting it in two or folding it in half and then just kind of free forming the edge with my scissors. So that will be fine, just like that. And we'll do the same thing with a belly band for the back cover. I'm going to lay down some gold, iridescent gold from um, Golden on my gel press and just get a gold background on these two pockets. Just pulling for color to 
Get that color in the background. I'm just trying it on for size there off screen to make sure that that it looks good. And now I want to add a little bit of embellishment to that or a little bit of detail to that. I'm going to grab a floral stencil and utilize some dark um, paint. And you can see that floral image. So I want to pick up the inside of that. So I'm just rubbing a scratch paper or a catch paper over the top of it. And now I'll lay my pocket down and pick up that remainder. And there. I'm happy with that, but I want to darken in the edges and darken in the sides where that stencil didn't represent itself to make that look intentional, if you will. There you go. So I think that will look nice on the inside front. And I shall do the same thing with the belly band for the inside back. We'll glue that into place and now cover the spine with a piece of green silk. And I'm just going to rip that silk to the width that I need. Actually, it turned out to be the perfect, perfect width for the height. So we'll just fold that over and mark a spot and rip that because I like those little frayed edges. And I thought about taking this and ironing it and making it um, just that smooth piece of silk, but I decided that the wrinkles, I was going to embrace those because I kind of like that randomness of the wrinkles in the fabric. And once you lay it down with the glue, it kind of smooths those out anyway. So I'm just placing my glue line down the spine. And then I'll put that silk into place on top of it. This glue does dry clear, but it did take a couple of days for it to disappear completely underneath. You can see where it marks that silk there with exactly where I laid the glue down. So to avoid that, I suppose you could uh, spread your glue out nice and, and smooth, and then you would have a consistent. But it did, after a couple of days, disappear, those, those little glue lines. So I'm okay with that. We'll just glue up the extra, and you can see I have a lot of threads that um, are being created by pulling that silk in half, pulling that silk apart. And I want to use those threads as well. So I'm going to wad those up and flip my book over and place some glue here on the corner of that image. And I'm just, with the glitter glue, going to put those in place. And I think to secure them, I'm going to pull out some um, wax and just put a wax seal right there on top of all of those threads. So let's pull that wax out. I've chosen a gold wax. And let's light that wax stick up and just drop that wax right into the top of the threads. Now, I did do this a little higher than I normally do because I was fearful I would get a <laughs> strand of that thread and set my whole project on fire. So be careful, of course, when you're working with fire and paper because the amount of paper that most of us have in our work spots or our studios or our workplace or our craft room, whatever you choose to call it, 
or a fire hazard when you pull out pull out an open flame. So be very cautious with this. I also have a cup of water that I keep on my workbench. And as soon as I finished with that um, wax piece, I dumped that or extinguished it in that water. Now I'm coming back in with the liquid pearls to just add a little highlight down the edge of that spine. So that quick, that easy from an image that you have. This could be a photo of family. It could be an, a photograph you've taken. It can be an image that you found in a book like I did. But there are lots of possibilities with this fractured image technique. Um, like I said, again, uh, Devon Rex for Art does a wonderful job with it in collage. And it, I would strongly suggest you take a look at her channel. This is what I chose to do because I thought it would make a great way to finish a composition book. And that's my, that's my project right now. And the playlist for all of those composition books is listed here on my end screen. I believe I have seven complete now, and I am going through at least a dozen. So I hope you'll come over and join me. Thank you very much for being here, and I shall say bye for now.